Hello everyone, I am 3F John, and I wanted to do a little bonus video today. We are going to play the demo of Stygian Reign of the Old Ones. This is a game that is being put out by Cultic Gaming, or Cultic Games, one of the two. And um, it is a side-scroller, turn-based combat RPG that is set in the city of Arkham and the Lovecraftian universe. So, let's go ahead and play it. This is a demo and there's a few things I'm going to explain about it, but we got this kind of cool cutscene. So, we'll go ahead and start this out. What a logo for a company. That is just so awesome cultic and it's just the oh man i love that logo cultic games by the way your former life was in a bliss of ignorance until you've awakened to the darkness waiting on the doorstep of our fragile dimension something terrible left its eons old slumber and the reality as we knew it collapsed the city of Arkham was pulled to somewhere not of this world, and its residents are in the shadows of true terror. As a survivor of this catastrophe, you should investigate the strange occurrences in the city and survive the rising darkness, physically and mentally, if possible. Yeah, what an intro for an indie game. That is just so great. So um, this is the demo, and um, we can't save. So if we die, uh, that that's it. But I'm going to go ahead and create a new character. And, um, I mean, the, the character creation on this is just fantastic. I've played this game a little bit earlier, and I'm going to play through it uh, the way I want to play through it. And if I die, then um, I'll, I'll play through it a different way as well. So, you know, we'll just we'll see how far we can get in this demo. Like I said, you can't save, and the game's a little difficult as far as learning curve goes. At least for me so far, it's probably a lot better or easier for people who are actually good at games. But um, we're going to pick a dude. going to be a lad. Um, young characters are in their physical prime but lack experience. They start the game with bonus points in either physique, agility, or senses, but they're penalized for uh, having two less skill points. Adult characters are balanced, and older characters have more experience, but they start the game with a penalty in physique, agility, or senses. So we're just going to go with adult for right now, just the balanced version. And look at all these... Man, that is loud. I hope this is okay, uh, volume-wise. But look at all these character or character archetypes. You got the academic, the aristocrat, the criminal, the explorer, the investigator, the occultist, the performer, and the soldier. And each one of them has their own kind of like tagged skills. And then they each have their own special background. So we're going to go with occultist because come on, this is 3F John, the madman himself. Background, we have Secret Society. The character has no particular advantage or disadvantage and starts the game with the usual specifications of your chosen archetype, which I should probably read out. Occultist. This character is a member of a hidden order. The backing of the order has made life easier so far, but the initiation rite required to join the inner circle may involve some complications. Investigation, medicine, and occult skills can be improved to the maximum level, and it requires a minimum score of 6 and will. So that's what we're going to go with. Um, as far as this goes, we can go with Default Secret Society, which has no advantages or disadvantages. We can go with Mesmerist, which gives us plus one to Psychology, but minus five total Sanity. Depraved Occultist, which would give us higher sex appeal, but slower artifact research. Or Alchemist, which is considerably higher medical research rating, but medical skill can't be used in game challenges. Uh, we're going to go with Secret Society because just some of this other stuff, I'm not sure if it's actually available yet in the demo, but, you know, if the game delivers on half the promising stuff that we're seeing here, then it'll, it'll be completely and totally worth the money. 
So now we have belief systems. You can be a humanist. Throughout history, mankind has survived countless threats, and if we stop wringing our hands and start cooperating, we will live to see the human spirit prevail once more. You get extra sanity gained by selecting humanistic dialogue choices and committing acts of altruism. You can be materialistic. If we're all doomed, let's make our final days worthwhile. Wealth, lust, power, pursue what eases your pain. Extra sanity can be gained by selecting materialistic dialogue choices though, through material gain and act of self-indulgence. Nihilistic. At last, there is no doubt that human beings are of no significance in the cold machinations of the cosmos. Thus, every action is of equal importance and worthlessness, just as it has always been. Extra sanity gained through nihilistic dialogue choices. So you get, you know, extra sanity depending on all your different ones. Divine. The Black Day is God's final test of humanity. We failed him once, but he has given us this last chance of redemption. Those who are alive survived for this reason. To prove that mankind is not without hope. Rational. No matter how unusual or baffling, no phenomenon is beyond the boundary of science and rational thought. There must be an explanation. What must be done is to search and find it. And the one we're going to go with. Esoteric. When supernatural becomes natural, the only path is to embrace the knowledge of the ancient forces behind the veil. We must tap into the hidden arts and realize our potential in order to survive and then eventually dominate. So that's what we're going to go with. Um, character identity. As of right now, I played through this a little earlier. I don't know what these do aside from just give you a different kind of like avatar, but... The character itself looks the same in the demo, and I, I assume that's just a demo thing, and that that'll change once the actual game comes out. But for consistency's sake, we're going to go with this guy, and we're going to name him 3F John. Fuck. Oh, we'll John. I promise I know how to smell my, smell my own name. I can smell my own name, goddammit. No, I promise I know how to spell spell my own name. Um, I'm not that crazy. Alright. We get seven points to put into our attributes, and we get five points to put into our skills. Obviously, investigation, medicine, and occult are our tag skills based on the occultist class. So, yeah. We're gonna go with agility. Lots of agility. And lots of mind. And that's what we're gonna go with. Uh, we'll go with occult... Um, athletics, and one in speechcraft. Um, I'm not going to read all these, obviously. They're attributes and skills. I mean, they are what they sound like. Athletics, firearm, investigation. You know, occult affects your spellcraft and research. Psychology affects mental resistance, science, and scientific research. You know, as far as attributes go, physique. If you've ever played an RPG before, you know what these are. <laughs> so, here's our character. And let's get started. Venturing into the Old Eel Attic. The demo version has no save feature. Think before you act and do not shun from escaping when the need arises. I just, I love the comic book cover, Stygian Tales, The Doom That Came to Arkham. Uh, as, a, as a lover of comic books, man, I'd love to have something like that. So, let's begin. That was a loud keystroke. A year has passed since your encounter with that peculiar fellow, known as the Dismal Man. When you last met, he instructed you, Find me beyond Arkham, after the Black Day. At the time, these words did not mean much to you. But soon after, you would come to understand. On what is now known as the Black Day, under the shadow of the Awakened, the world you knew vanished, and with it your hopes, future, and loved ones. For reasons unknown, the city of Arkham was separated from the carcass of Earth and exiled to an other place under alien stars, a twilight realm between dimensions. Unlike many others, you survived body and mind mostly intact. Ever since, you have existed from day to day in the gray gloom of the old eel house, waiting for that enigmatic man to call. Shut up. 
A man whose very existence you are now beginning to question, until you wake into another layer of the nightmare, until the visit at the old attic. So this is a point-and-click game. Um, down here we have our inventory, our character selection, or our character stuff, our inventory, our grimoire, which for those spell casters like myself, it has your spells in it: Evil Eye, Spirit of Al Razi, and the Blood Circle. A map of the area of Arkham. There's Miskatonic University, home of our favorite librarian. And journal. Find the dismal man. A year ago, I met a mysterious gentleman. I can, I, ah, I can recall little about him, but his name, the dismal man. He knew about the Black Day and also the fact that I'd be in Arkham. He told me to find him. Who is he? Does he have answers? I awoke in the attic of the old eel house to the light of the dismal man's lantern. It seems he wants me to follow him. So that's all this stuff down here. Journal. Nice little fountain pen logo. Uh, as a fan of fountain pens, I, I really like that. Um, oh, we also have stealth mode. But uh, let's go grab this lantern. And equip our lantern. I, I'm not reading that. It's it's a fucking lantern. You guys know what it is. <laughs> um, if we hit Alt, well, we can't do it right now, but it'll light up the stuff in the room that you can mess with. Locked. Find the dismal man. He knows. Now this is the one thing I don't like about this, and maybe they will fix it for the main game. But, um, you can't just click and hold it and then drag. See? He stops walking. Um, you know, Cultic Games, if you guys could totally add an ability where I can just hold the left mouse down and continue to walk and drag it, uh, that would be awesome. You know, if you guys feel up to it. You don't have to. I think it'd just make it a little bit easier to control the character. But as far as, as of right now, that's the only real, you know, gameplay standpoint thing that I don't really like. Check out the statue, man. The Statue of Cthulhu. Looks like some stuff that I have sitting in my house. So there's where we came out at. Um, can't really do too much with any of this right now, but don't worry. God, I like that statue. That's just really cool. Okay, sorry. So we're just kind of following the dismal man. See, this is the area where I wish I could just drag it and, hold and drag him. And just follow. Oh, we have some ghosts. And they're dancing with each other. Aw, oh, ghost couples. How adorable. Nothing creepy about dead people dancing in the street, right? Screen's starting to get kind of fuzzy. Oh no. The gates of Miskatonic University. The. Ah! What the hell was that? But I guess that's just part of the nightmare, right? The dismal man showed us something as he fled into Miskatonic University. It was all just a dream. But what does it mean? Sanity lost. 15. Horror witnessed.
So let's go over to our crate. We'll get our stuff, and I'll tell you what all this is. So, inventory. We have cigarettes. These are the currency in the city of Arkham now. Um, it says you can consume them. Oh, wow, that actually consumed them. Okay, so earlier, I was playing the game. That's a dagger, by the way. Ritual knife, one-handed melee weapon. Long curving dagger comes with a silver sheath, engraved with the scene of an ancient sacrificial ritual. Though ornamental in design, it is also clearly lethal. Do not underestimate its potential in melee combat. Let's put it in our little weapon slot. Weapon slot one. Down here we'd be unarmed. We have our super fucking awesome cloak. This frock coat is sure to catch the eye of any discerning occultist. Combined with the floor-length red cloak, the garment is completed by a gold brooch which pins the two garments together. It is certainly intended for some type of ceremony. And now we kind of look like Wong from the Doctor Strange comics. <laughs> um, Laudanium shot, which is it's, it's a painkiller. It gives us back life. Put this down here in our little area. This is processed opium. If I have to explain to you what processed opium is, um, go to the crappy part of your town and find somebody standing on a street corner and ask them where you can get some. And you can find out all about what processed opium is. We got our medical bag. We got our secret society medallion. Crafted from pure silver and engraved with a prominent arcane symbol. This battalion is granted to members of a secretive order of Western mysticism. An excerpt in Latin from their Oath of Initiation traces the outer edge. I'm not actually sure what I can do with it. It says it's non-craftable. These are rations. Um, an assortment of, you know, they're rations. Each party member consumes a ration once per day. We have a blank journal. Not actually sure what to use it for. So, um... This is what we got going for us so far. These are our spells. Evil Eye. A sickly eye gazes upon the caster's enemy who suffered reduced combat capabilities and an increased chance of critical failures. There is a complication. If you suffer from paranoia, there is a chance the spell will target the caster's strongest ally. Spirit of Al-Razi. The caster turns her saliva into corrosive acid and spits forth onto the chosen target. But, you know, if you fail the agility tech... Agility tech. Agility check. You'll take two to four corrosive damage. Blood circle. Caster performs a ritual to create a protective circle around herself, sacrificing a portion of her own health in the process. The complication? You gotta kinda hurt yourself to use it. Journal. Um, here we are. Here's all this stuff. It's gotten rid of the two lamps in the darkness. Here we are. Here's our new one. The last spot I saw the dismal man in my dream was by the gates of Miskatonic University. Perhaps I should take a closer look. And once we press F1 to learn the controls, but I already know the controls, so, um... Yeah. I was also wondering, F3, log for reporting bugs. Okay, just in case we come across any problems, like I came across earlier. And here is our bar that we've been living in. Barrels now serve its primitive table, still reek of stale alcohol and damp woody stench that makes your nose itch. I am probably not going to read every single thing in this demo, um, unless I know it's lore important, because otherwise my mouth will be dry, my throat will hurt, and I mean, I, I'll leave it up there long enough that you can read it. I, you, most people watching this can read. So, bars ornamented with a variety of eel and sea motifs. Craftsmanship of the carving adds a refreshing flavor to otherwise unsophisticated establishment. We're in a shitty bar. Uh, going by the label, shelves at first seem to be stocked with several different exotic liquors. Liquors. But the bottles all contain the same cheap Rotug Merino buys from the mob. Uh, we have people here. They don't really want to talk to us. Oh, wait, no, go back to this guy. You see Marino, the manager and bartender of the Old Eel. He's been your host for almost a year now. Of course, in return for your last precious resources. He has a tendency to suck you dry whenever he gets the opportunity. Well, with that mustache, I'd let him suck me dry, too. Good morning, Karunto. If you can even call this never-ending fucking twilight morning. What was all that hurly-burly upstairs? Bad dreams? 
Um, and see, you have dialogue options. So, I don't really have any, like, esoteric occultist ones in this conversation, but we'll see where we get to. Um, you could say that. Why am I not surprised? I recommend hitting the bottle before going to sleep. It makes things easier. Since you're awake, let's talk about the cigs you owe me. You were too drunk to pay yesterday and told me to remember you later. Remember? Uh, I didn't drink yesterday. This trick is getting old. Really, did I drink that much? How much do I owe you? Uh, I didn't drink yesterday, ass fucker. But I'm sure you did. Don't you trust your giving host, Cornuto? 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 Where would you be now if I haven't accommodated you? I pay for accommodations. Giving, I thought I was the one who's been giving. You'll have all my cigs soon. Why's the hurry? He pauses and smiles. I can't argue with that. Consider this one on the house. Oh, really? Thank you for your generosity. Spare me your short whip. Did I get a drink for that? No, I didn't. What a bunch of bullshit. Oh, the cook is dead. Oh, no. Yeah, the cook's dead. Um, this, it said it on the sign. I accidentally walked out before I could get, get it, so... Sorry, the cook is dead. As you see, we have members of the mob keeping people safe. We have our Cthulhu statue right over here again. Is there any way we can, like... The towering depiction of one of the Elder Gods perches atop the naked base of a shattered statue. Make sure we bow to it. Bow to the Overlord. There we go. Go back on about our business. People smoking cigarettes. Um, let's see. Okay, see how I'm holding alt? Or, you guys can't see it, but see how the barrels are lighting up right here? Yeah, alt does that. Rope and some cigarettes. It's like finding money in the trash. Does that guy have anything to say? You see a typical Arkham resident, tired and decrepit. He looks at you uneasily. Good day, sir. My name is 3F John. Good day. Where have you been living? Does it look like a good day to you? Oh no, you're one of those. Those raving lunatics. Fool. So yeah, um, I think he, he he treats me like that because I'm an occultist. Choking vines on every wall, the humble residents want a few that remains untouched by the destruction that has engulfed Arkham. Oh, here's some more stuff. Empty syringe. Oh, did I get the cigarettes? Okay, I did. So we have a drugstore over here where I'm assuming you can buy stuff. Yeah, there's not a settings mode to turn the audio down in here yet. Because I believe this should be the settings, but... What are you going to do, right? And yeah, you can see the mob. Um, they kind of taken over the town ever since the town got launched into, you know, another universe. Arkham, any place named Arkham is just fucking terrible to live, isn't it? Like, you have Arkham Asylum and Batman, which, yes, I am very much aware of what it's based on. And, like, this just Arkham and, and Lovecraft's universe just constantly gets fucked. You see a middle-aged, educated-looking man with a hint of danger in his smile. This must be the owner of the pharmacy, Richter. A new one, surprising, and just when I thought I'd finally run out of possibilities. I mean business. You know, our numbers aren't growing these days. Now tell old Richter what makes you tick. I rarely disappoint. Uh, let's see your stock, fucko. Of course, everyone in this town wants to peruse Uncle Richter's stock. Why should you be upset of... Uh, uh, why should you be an exception? God, I wish I could just speak English into a microphone correctly for one day without flubbing something. Open trade screen. And by the way, Uncle Richter... Uncle Richter. More like Uncle Weinstein. Okay. He sells cigars. He sells a bundle of cigarettes. Uh, drugs. All that. I think these numbers up here are how much he wants per... Yeah. I think this is because cigarettes are now our currency. One. 109. I think this is how much he wants the value. Um, so he'd want 10 cigarettes for this or, you know, two of these or something like that. Does that make sense? Uh, 
But uh, we don't have anything to trade with him right now. Though I probably should, because I'm not sure how far I can actually go in this game. I haven't gotten to the end of the demo yet. And, um... Oh, ooh, there's a rock stash. Rock stash! Sweet. You see a skinny woman wearing heavy makeup. Her provocative outfit emphasizes how she earned her living in Arkham. She moves like a person, drugged or drunk. Oh, I, I've met her type before. Oh, hi, darling. Interested in a good time? Nope. <laughs> Alright, so we've been looking around a lot. Um, let's actually, like, get on with the game. Or else this video is going to be forever. If you want to see the things that I'm not exploring, you can download this demo now on Steam for free. Alright. So we have a pawn shop up here. We have more trash. Pawn shop, you can buy weapons and stuff. Which we might do. Um, let's see what he's got. Because trying to get through this next part with just a knife is not going to be a lot of fun. Without the ability to save, it's now like the Dark Souls of side-scrolling RPGs. Another warning sign emphasizing the inconvertible regulations of the mob. Failure to abide by these edicts means certain death, as seen in the case of Honest Bill. By the way, that's Honest Bill. When you first took the first statue, it was actually the petrified corpse of Bill, who was frozen forever in this exact moment of his agonizing death. This rapidly drying beeswax became his burial shroud. Behind the barn is a stern look. Behind the barn? Bars. As a stern-looking man who looks deeply dissatisfied, although he looks to be in his 60s, the man invokes a certain kind of respect and fear. So, uh, you know, see what he has for sale. He has all sorts of stuff here. See, look, if I've managed to sell everything I had, I'd barely be able to afford maybe this gun. The 22. And I'd still have to buy ammo, which is five bucks a pop. And I don't see, like, an occultist hood for sale. So, let's just try to go through this with what we have. We'll see if it works. And yeah, like I said, if uh, you see things that you wanted me to look at, but I just didn't, um, let me know in the comments if you want me to come back and try and play this again. Maybe as a different character build for this demo and while we're waiting for the game to come out in 2019. Um, or, you know, like I said, if you have the computer and you're able to play it, you can always go and uh, pick this demo up on Steam now. So, um, let's keep going to the, this right over here. As you can see, the gates to Miskatonic University have fallen. So it doesn't look like we'll be going that way at the moment. Excuse me. The iconic gates of the Institution of Higher Learning lie in ruins. The way is impassable for now. But we did pick something up. Uh, there we go. I found a peculiar key at the entrance to the ruined university, marked with the number zero. Perhaps I could find someone to tell me what it unlocks. And... We can't really go any farther. We can't talk to a lot of these people right now. We can't go this way. 
Yeah, we can't go over here yet. We started over here. We haven't gone into French Hill, I don't believe. But I'm not sure we can, to be honest with you. Miskatonic River, never go there. Beware of the red boats. Follow him, he knows, in my dreams. All the trees are dead. Um, there we are. Oh no, I didn't want to look at that. I believe I know where we can find out what this key leads us to. The Bank of Arkham, built soon after Massachusetts became a federated state, is one of the oldest surviving buildings in town, but as with every other structure, it is now subject to the slow decay enveloping Arkham. Spine-chilling murmurs sound from within. Let's talk to the mob. You see a burly mob member watching the entrances of the ruined bank. Spit it out. I'd like to get inside. Help yourself, and if you get killed, try not to make a mess. Don't mind if I do. And if you guys will excuse me for one second. Uh, gotta put my little dog up in her chair. Sorry about that. Alright. Let's continue on. So now we're in the bank. We gotta be super sneaky. Looks like there's some stuff over here. A wad of dollars and some lock picks. Um Okay. Let's see if we can't open this. Excuse me. If you if you heard that, excuse me, I just may or may not have burped into the microphone. Struggle begins. Okay, this is combat. I go first, these people all go next. It goes in a line. Mask guy this guy, this person, see, in a line. Okay, um, I can move, I can retreat. We need to find a way. I can't use any spells, they're too far away from me. I need to put myself in a position to win. So I'm gonna try and get room between me and them and force these guys to have to try and come up and then line them directly like this. So let's go into a defensive stance. You can see at the bottom here, move list. This is turn-based combat, after all. I just lost sanity. Which I probably should have explained that before I rushed into combat. Okay, green meter underneath my... Oh, yeah, okay, so red meter is my life, green meter is my sanity. And I believe, and I don't understand how they line up combat here because I have a pretty high agility. I got to move first, then they all got to move, and now they all get to move again and I get to move last. I don't understand how this works, and if someone could explain this to me, this would be fantastic because this is... Once I know how to manipulate this, this game's gonna lose a lot of the... what makes it difficult, but for right now it just kind of feels like RNG, and I mean if you look at my red bar, I'm just getting punked before I have the chance to actually do anything. So we'll go to spells and we'll use the spit of Al Razi. And it dropped him fairly easily. And then let's retreat backwards a little bit, put some more distance between us and them. But I just put my back to them with this may be a bad move. I don't know what I'm... Oh! He hit his own guy. Alright. I can't punk him from here. Can I punk her? Yes, I can. Spit of Al Razi again. Yeah. 
Now see, these that have lit up, if I can get to these, I can move past these guys without having to kill them all. Um, you, if I recall, you get the same amount of experience whether you defeat them all or whether you open this up. There's no, no dishonor running away from some of these guys. See? The party successfully executed a progressive escape. So I do believe it gets me past them. Yes, it does. Vehicle is locked. A hood of the armored vehicle was stove in and the driver smashed through the wall. By the looks of it, he was suffering a painful death. Um, we got one of two ways we can go here. We can go up this way first. The bank depot. See what we can interact with? Okay. Bank Manager's Note. Notes written by the old bank manager, detailing his interactions with the stranger requesting a new safe deposit box under the number zero. The manager's shaky handwriting clearly conveys his anxiety about their meeting. Read. I've never been a man who put in any stock in superstition, yet my experience today has shaken my at once strict conviction I had unannounced a visitor. He was a tall man dressed in a Okay, so I'm having a hard as hell time reading this handwriting. Anyways, um, chances are this is the man we've been following, is the one who got the deposit box. I'll let you guys read that. But, um, by the way, I mean, big shout out to Cultic Games for doing like a handwritten type note. That's freaking awesome. Like I said, if, if Cultic like produces half of what this game is promised and implying is going to come then this will definitely be a fantastic game got a wrench and another shot um, let's go to our inventory. We'll go down one. Put our wrench here. Put our another shot here. Oh, we can't do that? Okay, well, we can at least do that. Um, I'm actually hurt. What does this do? Relieves mental and physical pain. Uh, let's use it. See if we can't get our health back. Because otherwise, I'm not exactly sure how to heal be honest with you. Shiny bits of crystal from this ruined chandelier glitter like stars against the filthy floor. Um, got something over here. Uh, yes, I am aware of this guy. Cigarettes, empty bottle. Um, let's talk to him. A strangely presentable man in a sharp suit waits eagerly as, at one of the destroyed cash counters. The moment he sees you, he begins to speak rapidly and enthusiastically. Hello, sir. How may I assist you? As you can see, this has been a very busy day. It looks like the boom has finally come to Arkham. It's nice to see our little town thriving, don't you think? Um, I wouldn't say thriving. What are you talking about? The place is wiped out. You know what? Let's play his game. Sure is. Of course you agree, sir. We are all share the same dream in this country, after all. All proud citizens. His voice cuts off abruptly, interrupts, and he freezes in place. He doesn't even blink. He looks like he's almost a living statue. Um, I better go. Some men are endowed by their creator with certain alienable rights. Alienable rights instead of unalienable. Okay. Let me help you with your transaction, sir. May I see your credentials, please? Um, I can show him the Secret Society medallion. You guys think we should do that? Yeah, let's do that. Who grabs the objects from your hand? Let me see. It says you're a self-seeking city shaman. Here are your documents, sir. I hope they aid in your game of misery, piss, and shit. See? 
We were able to get out of there. All right. I don't know how to get sanity back either. Um, honestly, I'm still learning how to do this, so F1. Ah, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, see, it says sanity up here. Action points. Swap weapons, AP cost, all that fun stuff. Health. But it doesn't really say how to get sanity and health back, aside from just doing the... Oh, crap, I got their attention, too. Struggle begins. No, go away. Go away. Miss. Miss. If I just retreat from every fight, can I just get past these people? Or are they still going to be here when I retreat? We'll find out. Um, I'm going to retreat, and if they're still here, we're just going to go by, because this is as far as I got last time, and then the game crashed, and I didn't... Yeah, they're still fucking here. All right. Well, it looks like we're going to have to try and get past them, doesn't it? Unless I can stealth around. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. But I bet it triggers the moment I get up here. Yep. Alright, so we do have to fight them. By the way, the art in this is fantastic. Uh, let's use the evil eye. Then we'll go to defense mode. Oh, he hit his buddy. The madman! He really did it! He punched his buddy instead of me. Maybe they'll just fight each other. That would be freaking awesome. And he's in despair, so he won't attack. See, Lunatic succumbs to despair and loses the will. Yeah, I don't understand how the order of combat goes here. If someone could explain this to me, whether at Cultic Games or, or just someone who knows what's really going on, that'd be fantastic, because I'd love to be able to figure out how to manipulate this. Dropped him. Uh, let's move down here. Go to defense. Yeah, see, I'm almost out of sanity points. I don't know how to get them back. New turn begins, and I'm second again. I don't understand this. I moved before this guy did. Like, if it's just random, that's one thing, but I'd really like to know how this works exactly. Um, and then we can either cast an attack. Oh, wait, I can cover? Oh, sweet! Okay, well, that changes things. Doesn't it? Alright, let's take this guy out. I mean, this is probably the last time we can use this attack, so... I really wish we could figure out how to get sanity points. Defend. Yep, they're on my last sanity point. You have gone insane. Your grasp on reality is lost forever. Your deranged laughter will become one of the endless cacophony of Arkham's lunatics. Uh, okay. I guess that's over. And the game crashed. Yeah. Um, it does that when you lose, and I don't get the chance to report it. So, um, 
if anybody from Cultic Games sees this, yeah, um, when you go to main menu in the demo, it crashes. So, anyways, um, I might load up another one and play again, or I might not. We've been going for a little bit of time here. Um, I will, however, continue to play this, and I'm going to continue to monitor the development of this game, because, as I said earlier, if it puts out half of what it, it implies that's coming with this game, then it is going to be fantastic. So... Until next time, everyone, I am 3F John. I hope you have enjoyed the little bit of playtime I did on the Stygian Reign of the Old Ones demo. Um, tell me what you think about this game, what you'd like to see in it, if you agree with what, you know, certain things I think, and if you don't agree, definitely let me know. And I will have more of my videos out each and every Wednesday. This is a little bonus video that I wanted to do. So, big videos come out on other days, you know, Wednesday and whatnot. So uh, I'm kind of rambling here. So I'll see you guys next time. This is 3F John signing off.